And so, continuing on our journey to cover all the news from Riot's presentation, in a more digestible chunks, rather than in a massive episode of Rift News. After covering the cinematic and the VGU polls, we are now going to have a look at Udyr's VGU. Since this year, Udyr may be our only VGU, unless Riot decides to work on the other mysterious VGU, which right now we still don't know if it is happening. It's worth talking about Udyr because, yeah, there may not be anything else. So without further ado, let's go through the post about Udyr's VGU, so that you don't have to do that yourselves. The post starts with a quick recap. Here they once again mention the main goals when it comes to Udyr's VGU. They want to keep his stance changing identity, but they want to give him some moments of hype. They also want to keep him as a warrior shaman, with modern league visual standards. And they want to get his in-game portrayal closer to his lore. Because yes, Udyr's lore is really awesome. Lastly, they recapped what they mentioned in the video presentation. The fact that Udyr's antlers were removed. Partially they did it because they felt like Udyr didn't need them for his unique silhouette. Remember this sentence. We'll talk about it later. And then we get into the core of this post. First they start talking about the antlers. At first they thought Udyr's rework would be simple. But soon they realized that things will get a bit more complicated. The priority was to get his proportions right. Without that nailed, Udyr would always look goofy. In this image we can see the comparisons of the proportions. You can see that with the antlers, Udyr visually looked bigger. And so, once they removed them, they had to scale the entire model up to compensate for it. The core idea was still a big strong mountain man. And that's where the antlers didn't cooperate. While they mentioned that they removed them because they didn't need them for the silhouette, in this post they also mentioned that they tried to make the antlers look good, but they just couldn't pull it off. Because of how much Udyr was hunched over, they couldn't get them to not look goofy. They tried to turn them into wings or propellers, but they always looked off. But since Udyr wasn't an antler guy, but he was an animal spirit guy, that's why they removed them. They didn't need them, but the silhouette part was only one reason. When they then started modeling the base model, making the base body was easy, but the four stances connected to it were a bit more complicated. Each of them had to look unique and they had to amplify a fantasy. However, they couldn't just make four new models, one for each stance. That's what Udyr has right now and that's why it has always been so painful to make skins for him. Because instead of making just one skin, you are theoretically making five skins. One base model and then four, one for each stance. So instead, to make it easier to make skins for Udyr in the future, instead of giving him different models for the stances, Riot did the obvious smart thing and they kept his base model the same and each stance only augments the base model. That's what we can see in this image. Here we can see that whenever Udyr swaps a stance, only his arms will change. But to nail this shifting part of Udyr, Riot went through about 10 iterations for each animal augment. At the end of this part, they mentioned that they are getting closer to finishing his visuals. And they even gave us this teaser, called A Thick Boy at the Beach. Either this is where Riot was just having fun, or they are teasing the fact that Udyr may be getting a pool party skin. In the next part we get to the animations. Here they mention that when they were animating the four different stances, they had to approach them as if they were four different champions. That's because each stance is technically representing a totally different animal. And apparently Phoenix was the most challenging to make. This stance had to feel like it was bird-like, magical, related to ice, and wild. So they started with a wing attack. But this animation wasn't really related to ice and it looked like it was swiping multiple enemies. It didn't look like a single target auto attack. So they tried to replace the wind with ice. Because this spawned a sharp object, you could see that it only pierced one target. So it fixed that issue. But now it looked way too magical. And Udyr was not a mage. So they tried attaching the ice to his arm. Suddenly it was a great combination of magic and fighting. 
but now it lost the birdie aspect. This didn't feel like Anivia. And so in the end they took all of this and they applied it to the first auto attack. And that's how they created the swipe attack with icy wings. Just like for this one, for the other animations they always consider personality first and then the spell's functionality. Here we got two examples. The left one may be an early version of the bear, with the right one definitely being the ram. And then we get to the visual effects. Here we learned that the VFX were themed after fighting games. But before they get to explaining how the VFX work, they first had to explain his passive. If Udyr is already in a stance and it is on cooldown, he can awaken it. Each stance has an empowered form or function when it is awakened. So the empowered form needs to feel powerful. The first iteration of the power VFX looked cool, but it didn't look like it came from League. In the second version we can see that it really feels like he's channeling power. It has less hard shapes and more soft waves. This same effect was applied to the four other stances, where each has its own color palette. The interesting thing about these four is that these four have the exact same VFX. It is all just different colors. That's how much a simple color swap can affect the feel. But up until now they were making the VFX for the old model. And so when the new model came in they had to consider how the VFX would be applied. For example when you press a button multiple things happen. With Q Udyr enters a stance he gets attack speed for his next attack and then he gets extra attack speed for a certain duration. In League when you want to show that your next attack does something extra, it usually means glowy hands. So in this case they added lightning for his bear stance. So in total they had to make three visuals just for his Q. There was the idol with bear claws active, the stance activation and the awakened stance activation with buffs. With this buff, if he then auto attacks an enemy, that spreads lightning around. And that's where we got this arcing effect. It is obviously inspired by Volibear's lightning, but the arcing really makes sure you know where the lightning is going next. And in fact, if it can't bounce anywhere, it has an effect to show you that it is staying on the same target, continuing to deal damage. Here I wanna get back to the sentence I told you to remember. You know, the one about the silhouette. When you look here on the walking animation, you can see that it feels like the antlers are missing. Like we know he was supposed to have something on his back. And now I will forever know there was something supposed to be there. But more on that, even though the antlers weren't probably needed for his unique silhouette, right now his unique silhouette is one massive blob of VFX. So it's gonna be interesting to see how Udyr lands on the Summoner's Rift in the end. But here we can mention another cool thing. It was pointed out to me in my chat. But yeah, if you look at his walking animation, you can see it is definitely inspired by Volibear. Volibear has a very similar one. And I really like that kind of detail. Also, don't pay attention to his attack animation. That animation is actually the one from the old model. And finally, then we get to talk about skins. Or one skin that they started concepting. We got Dragon Mancer as an example. Unlike Dragon Slayers, Dragon Mancers are a bit more mystical. So they didn't want to go full draconic with Udyr. And they decided to keep him more human than a dragon because they wanted to show off that he is in control of the powers. Now dragons have different elements and those would be really cool to see on the skin. But still they will only affect his arms. And at the end of this part they showed us the final idea of the skin. In my opinion I would actually make him even more human. I would love it if the Dragon Mancer skin was a bit closer to one of the original concepts. Yes I know that you like the mystical side, but here he actually looks a bit too draconic. Get him closer to the base model, where his base body is really just human, but his arms are channeling the powers. I would love it if the Dragon Mancer Udyr was also just a human, channeling the insane power of the dragons. And right now it may be just my opinion, but that concept doesn't exactly show it. And then we get to the final part wrapping it up. Here they mention that Udyr has a lot of skins, 
and swapping stances makes the entire creation process longer. This absolutely makes sense. Not to mention that he also has an ultimate skin. And I wouldn't be surprised if the ultimate skin would actually have 5 different models. That would be worthy of an ultimate skin. And for the final image they show us the same concept which they showed us last time, but here Udyr doesn't have the antlers, which is fine, but you know Fraudiordian shamans are known for these iconic antlers. And they also updated his tattoos. So now... You can't mistake the bear for a tiger. 